would have helped us out as far as trying to finish the ball game off. So we started working doing tour days and spending a lot of time on our one minute offense. We had a new quarterback and a young man by the name of Charlie Ward. What we were trying to do at that point was continue with the same kind of offense that we had been running in the past, the sprint draw and the sprint draw pass and being able to base our passing game off of the sprint draw uh, passing game. What happened is we evolved into this is that at the early part of the year, we were trying to make him do what we knew and run our offense. And as a result, he threw 13 interceptions in about the first four ball games. What we did at that point is that we got into the Georgia Tech ball game, a game in which we got behind by two or three touchdowns going into the fourth quarter. At that point, we could not get anything going. So what we decided to do was let's just get in our one minute offense now and see if we can get something going and try to score some points. And as a result of getting into that one minute offense, we got into it, we went right down the field and scored. We got into it a second time, we went down the field and scored. They couldn't stop us. The third time, we got smart. We said, we got this thing back in reach now, let's get back in our base offense and let's go get them. We went back in our base offense, three downs and punt. They went and got a field goal, said, hey, this is not gonna work, let's go back and get it again. So what we did, we went back and got in the one minute shotgun again, we went right down the field and scored and won the football game. That was how it got started. The next week, we said we were going to go in and feature the shotgun offense. One minute, uh, we played Virginia up there. It was wet. It was raining. We could not get into it. So what we did, we stayed in our base offense, won the football game like 13 to 3. Next week, we came back at home playing Maryland. Clear, pretty sunny day. Maryland was noted for their one minute offense. They kicked off to us. We started out in our one minute, no huddle offense, went right down the field. We ended up scoring about 70 points. Why? Because we were doing what our quarterback could do. And what we did, we tried to perfect our one minute offense and trying to do the things again. Why? Because we were loaded at wide receiver. And we had some good running backs. So we, uh, we, we started to take all of that skill that was in the state of Florida and just kind of blend it together and put our best football on, players on the field and, and we just decided to go, go to work. Now, communication system for the one minute offense. Now, in the one minute offense, you've got to be able to communicate to your receivers and to your offensive line. Our quarterback will always set the formation to the field in one minute. We won't put the formation into the sideline. It will always yell out right, 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 a left, left, left. That will, we flip flop our offensive line strong and the quick side. So we would call it that way with the strong side always going to the field. The wide receivers knew that they were the, the tight end or our Y and the flanker always went to the field. So it was easier that way. As soon as the ball was down, they knew that they were going to run to the wide side. The other kids knew that they were going into the short side. So he would always call right, 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 a left, left, left to get the formation that we wanted. Now, what we would do there is that we will signal our plays in from the side. We went through a, a, a different scenario, a lot of scenarios as far as trying to how to figure out how we want to actually go through this process. We started out by doing hand signals. I'll go over some of the signals. We started out by doing hand signals. And after a while, other people started picking up the hand signals. For an example, we were playing Georgia Tech that day, and they had all of our hand signals. They were trying to yell those out to the players, but the thing is, you can yell it out to them, but still they gotta be able to, to uh, take care of business or know what they're supposed to do. So we started using, we went from the hand signals and we got smart, we got wristbands. We gave all of our players wristbands, we signaled a number in from the side and everybody would stand up looking at wristbands. So that lasted for about a half, we ditched that. For an example, we had some fun in terms of how we would name our plays and what we went to was more descriptive names as opposed to uh, naming it 
uh, 60-something or 270-something. We went and actually gave it a name. For an example, uh, if we wanted to throw the football, one of our pass patterns would be, for an example, 344 Cadillac. And the players would know right, and this was the Cadillac signal. And uh, if we wanted another, we have 344 Zebra, which is Z on the square end. 344 Exxon, Exxon, mean X is on the square end. So we came to names like that and trying to name all of our plays. Now, when we got to naming plays for the shotgun, we went to names that our kids would have some fun with. For an example, if we were going to run the ball, if we were going to run the ball, say, out of the eye, then what we, the signal we'll give from the sideline, we'll do this. And that was Tarzan. And that was our isolation coming up to the strong side. So whenever the kids saw this, they knew Tarzan in isolation. Now, if we wanted to come back to the weak side, what would be the opposite of Tarzan? Jane. So we just go, and this was Jane. Now, if we wanted to read it, and let him run, we like to run at the one technique. If we wanted to read him and let him run at the one technique, we would simply cross our legs. Now he know he has Tarzan or Jane. And that way he has an either or. You don't have to worry about going up trying to change the play. He reads one technique, you give him two plays, it's gonna be this one or this one over here. Now, another thing, uh, play that we have for an example, we went, this was yabba dabba do. Fred Flintstone, and if you went yabba dabba do, when you come back, you wanted to go the other way, what would be the opposite of Fred? Wilma. So we come back with Wilma, with the hair, Wilma hair, the hair up here. So we come back with Fred and Wilma. And again, if we wanted to do, we just cross our legs, Fred or Wilma, once he sees the legs across. Now, what happens now is that we want to tie in a freeze with it, try to make them jump off size and if they didn't jump off size, then go ahead and run the play. So if we want to do that, we would cross our legs, freeze, Tarzan. So he'd come up, try to make them jump off side. They didn't jump, he'd back up, Tarzan, Tarzan, come back up, and he snapped the play on the second sound. So again, that's how we were able to get into it. Uh, if we wanted to, we had a direct snap. If we wanted to snap the ball directly to the tailback and run the ball, then we do this. This is AT&T, this is direct, this is telephone. So everybody go up there and call direct, direct, and this was the signal. So that what the quarterback would do is walk up to the line, you're direct, and he'd do this. Now everybody knows what the play is. It's gonna be a direct snap to the tailback. Uh, we want to run the ball out of the eye, uh, out of three fourths, for an example, our sprint draw. If we want to come strong side, we would do this. Which was, uh, which was Clyde. If we wanted to come back weak side, what would be weak side? Who's the opposite of Bonnie? I mean Clyde, Bonnie. So we come back here, this is Bonnie. So we either came up, we had Clyde, we come back weak side, we go Bonnie. We want to run our sweep, we come up with our sweep, we'll put our fingers in our mouth and go like it was a whistle. And the whistle was, the guy that had the whistle was Bobby Bowden and his favorite play uh, was the sweep, so we just call it, they walked up the line and said, Bobby, 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 and do this. Now everybody knows that we're gonna run the sweep. If we want to bring it back to the weak side, we'll do this, which was Ann, Ann with the dimples. That was Ann Bowden, so we bring it back to the weak side. So again, that's, <laughs> that's how we got into the place, making them descriptive as to how we want to call them. Now, what I'd like to show you is some of the passes First, I'll show you some of the formations that we ran and then get into some of the passes. What we did is that we had a two wide receiver set, a three wide receiver set, and a four wide receiver set. We were able to interchange these sets at any point during the football game. The thing that we wanted to do was to try to keep the defense off balance by not knowing exactly what set we were going to have on the field at any particular time. So our players had to know exactly what set they were in and when they were supposed to be on the field. For an example, if we did this, that was base. we just yell out on the side, base, base, base. And our two wide receivers would go in with our two running backs. Now we want to send three wide outs. We'll put our hand up like this, Panther, Panther. 
and that group went out on the field, a quarterback would look, the quarterback would not have to call a set because the receivers going in or the backs going in would yell out what the set was. We wanted to go four wide receivers, we'd do this, and we yell out rifle. And as they run out on the field, they would be yelling out rifle, rifle. And then the players on the field knew that they were coming out and uh, to get off the field. Now, for an example, our sets, what we got into in our particular sets, for an example, our base, our three wide receiver set, we usually set our Z three yards outside the hash. Uh, okay. Okay. This is our base set with our three wide, two wide receiver. Now, what we're thinking in this set, we want to run our sprint draw and our sprint draw passing game. We want to be able to use our sweep. Now, what we did not want to do is go totally to the no huddle offense because what happens then is that we felt that we would lose our toughness of being able to knock people off the ball and getting after them. So what we wanted to do is be able to combine our no huddle with the offense that would give us the toughness and when we needed to put someone away, we would not be in a position of trying to go back and run the ball having thrown the ball all day and having not worked on it. So we wanted to keep this particular set in. Also, we wanted to have this set when it was a rainy, cold, a muddy day. We wanted to be able to go in, get in this particular set here, and get after some people because we felt like we had the personnel to do both. The other set, after the base set, this was a two wide receiver set here. We came back with our next set, was our, what we call our Panther. Our Panther was our three wide receiver set. And what we're trying to do here, we have our Y, which was two steps inside the hash. Our Z now was three outside. We have our X. We could line up in the shotgun here, and from the shotgun, we could shift into the I. We found the advantage of lining up in the shotgun and now shifting to the eye. Once you line up in the shotgun, people have a tendency to think you're going to throw the football. They widen their defensive ends out, and they make certain calls. Now when you shift from here, from that particular set to the eye, those defensive ends tighten down. Now they're thinking more that we're going to run the football. So we want to be able to shift and throw the ball and stay wide and throw the ball as well as run the ball from this particular set. This was our three wide receiver set. When people start giving us a lot of various blitzes, uh, they were going to come with some blitzes that we were not accustomed to. Uh, what we would do then is get in this particular set because now we've got two backs in the backfield. We felt that we could pick up anything they threw at us in terms of blitzes or stunts or twists or whatever they were going to come at us with. The next set we had was our rifle. Our rifle set was our four wide receiver set. Again, we had the, the Y, the Z. We moved our tailback. We brought in another wide receiver. The quarterback is still in the gun in our back. <clears throat> now, a lot of people like to be able to move their tailback up or move someone out to a position so that the other people can't tell what personnel that you have, the kind of changes that you're going to make. We felt that we could make those changes so fast, and we felt that we were going to get our best players in the game. For an example, we were thinking, why take a guy who was a running back, and all he did all practice was work on uh, running out of the backfield, now move him out here and have him become a wide receiver. Why take a tight end who was here who was used to blocking and just split him out? So what we're going to do, is take wide receivers who are used to running pass patterns, catching the football, put them in the ball game, and let them do what their expertise or what their specialty was. That was getting downfield and catching the football. One of the other things we did 
we changed and we put our tail back there. We had a smaller back who did a good job of catching the ball and coming out of the backfield. So rather than leave our big tail back, as we had up into this, in this set, we came back with a smaller back who was adept at catching the football and put him there. One of the things we also did in our Panther set is that we switched our tailback and our fullback. When you think about it, most people will put their fullback to the tight end side, their tailback to the weak side, and they set up their blocking so that they could release that tailback out of the backfield. What we did, we switched it and went just the opposite. We put our tail back on the strong side. Now when that end comes off that weak side over there, we got that big full back over there to pick him up coming out. Now you say, what about that tail back coming at the big linebacker or somebody? We were going to release that tail back. We switched our blocking to go the other way so that our tail back could get out of the backfield. Now when that tail back came out of the backfield, what happens if he comes out on the weak side? You got that wheel backer over there who's used to picking up a back in pass coverage, who's used to dropping. Now by moving him on the other side, you had an Ed in over there, you had a run support back over there, and that was their forte, those kinds of things. Now you bring a quick back out there on a guy that's really in run support, and you have him moving around, so we got a lot of advantages that way because we got these big log cutters out there and that back came up and gave him a move and he was gone because they were not used to it and people were going to always keep that big guy that they wanted to stop the run on that side. So we felt like we had an advantage there. Now, what we tried to do as far as these different sets is our rifle set. I'm going to show you some of the passes our rifle. For an example, we went into a ball game with maybe six runs at the most. We went into a ball game with over 60-some passes. Uh, a lot of our passes we could run from, the, from all the different sets. They had a lot of carryover. We could run the same passes out of each set, but we would call them different things, and we had a few modifications on them so that our kids, we did not want to do a lot of different things. We're going to do the same thing but different sets, and we give the defense a different look. Also from these different sets, what we would do is that we would change our splits. Sometimes our split would be tight. We move out to what we call a normal split, then we get out wide splits. What we do a lot of times is try to stretch people out all over the field and then move back inside and run our passing game to try to give us some, give us some flexibility. What we also did was tie some runs into the various splits so that every time I got into a wide split, you could not say that, well, they're going to throw the football. Well, I do, what we would do there is get the wide splits. Now we would tie some uh, screens into them, some draws and things like that to keep people honest. When we got in tight, we would still throw the ball and still have our runs. What we try to do is get a mixture so that you can tell what was coming. The pass that we like to base everything off the premise of the passing game is what we call our verticals. Our vertical stretch down the field. What we like to do now is get into our four wide receiver set. And I've got some tapes on these, and I'll show you these as we go along and give you the quarterback reads. Now what we've done now, uh, going to do now, we're going to get into our vertical split. Our vertical split, now we're going to take that Z and move him out to the top of the numbers. We're going to take the X and move him out to the top of the numbers over here. We put that back now, which we like to call our Ted, who's replacing the tailback. We have him split the difference. Now, we have the tailback in there. Quarterback heels at five. What we want to do now is run our verticals. If I, we run a vertical out of a four wide receiver set, it's called a vertical. So now I've got this guy here, here. They're taking off and they're staying at the top of the numbers, no deeper or wider than the bottom of the numbers. We want to keep them up the field. We want to keep them wide. Their job is to penetrate down the field. <clears throat> we would take the inside receiver here, bring him inside, and get him up the hash. He's going to be two yards outside or two steps outside of the hash. His job is to make sure he gets up the field, get that too deep safety man out of there, and keep him moving. Now, we bring this man here, 
the tailback, we bring him in here, a uh, depth of three to four yards, we move him outside. His job now is to get that backer in here to come down and play him and get him out of the middle. Everyone, regardless of the coverage, will get up the field as you see here. Regardless of what kind of coverage they gave us, this is what we're going to do. Now, the guy who had the read was going to be the Y. The Y would read the coverage. He would make an outside release of the strong safety. Whoever was over him get outside and get back vertical up the field. If he read a safety on the hash, he would read his side. If that safety was on the hash, he had a head move at 8 to 10. Now he's running what we call a broken arrow coming over in the middle. Why was this effective? If you got too deep, these safeties have to get back because you've got those outside people going deep. The linebacker can't get up under it because you've got this back moving outside and taking the linebacker out. What happens now if the free safety stays in the middle? If the free safety, by the way, on this one, the quarterback read is 1-2. If the free safety stays in the middle, now he stays up the hash. Again, the quarterback is going 1-2. More than likely, he's coming down to this man here on your vertical. What happens now, we bring the same thing or the same pattern and we give it to you out of a three wide receiver set. We give it to you out of a three wide receiver set. Now, we do not call it vertical. When we call verticals, we're running to landmarks. That's straight down the field. One of the ways we practice our landmarks is that what we have a five minute period we call our landmark drill. What we do is we get up, we call a formation, a rifle, right, everyone get up out in their alignments, they take off, they get down the field 15 yards, we blow the whistle, they stop. Once they get down the field, we stop, we go down the field, we look. Are you right next to the, uh, are you on the top of the numbers? Are you two steps inside, top? And what we do now, we say, no, I want you out another step. Again, what we're doing, we want it exactly precise, exactly what we say. Why? Because we want to stretch it. I did not say one step inside of the top of the number. I said, I want you on the top of the number. Again, we're getting to uh, being precise and making them do exactly what we want them to do. Now when we come back and we run the same pattern out of a three wide receiver set, we don't call it vertical now. We call it takeoff. Why? Because now we're running at the technique. We're running at the technique now, but the Y still had, well, the Y will still run a broken arrow. What we have now, for an example, if this corner is lined up inside, I run at him, and now I've got my takeoff. What happens if, if uh, he's hard over here, and we've got a safety man on the hash, then he's going to fade it. But if he's got a soft corner, then he's going to run at the soft corner and run his takeoff there. Again, with quarterback now here, he's thinking here to here. If we're going three wide receivers and he gets man coverage, then we're going to pick out a corner that we want to go against. For an example, we, for an example in the Nebraska game, we played one corner who was very cautious. We threw all of our outs at him. The other corner was very aggressive. We threw our takeoffs at that guy. Again, we're going to look for the best matchups, the tightest coverage. We're going to go at that coverage. Quarterback get man coverage, he gets a blitz. Immediately he's thinking outside, getting the ball off. What we'll do now, we're still bringing this tailback up here, and we're taking him outside to get this. Now we come down here, and it's an automatic broken arrow. Automatic. Why do you want it automatic? Because if he goes up the hash and this corner is inside and he got man, now you got two people running together. So now we go this coverage, we get them outside, the wide receiver is outside, we get the tight end down the middle. The beauty of it is that what happens now if you're anticipating man coverage, you want to throw the ball outside 
now they, sh they, they change the defenses and they line up in two deep. If they line up with the free, they line up at two deep, so they got a safety here, a safety here. Now what I have is that he's going to go outside, he's outside, he's here, I got him releasing here, and I still got my broken arrow in the middle, which is what I want. So again, I can go back and get exactly what I want, the tight end down the middle. Okay, now you have a question. Okay, now another one that I can tie into this. Yes. Uh, the one back set, what we're doing basically is reading the down lineman, first down lineman, second down lineman, and we'll, we'll roll it over to that side. Uh, we'll fan the offensive line back to the weak side or turn out back to the weak side. No, we will not. No, we will never keep our tail back in. We will always release our tail back. Uh, one of the things that happens when you get into this, a lot of people will keep blitz and that they'll bring that, they'll bring that backer up there and they're sitting. If you, you're not sure if he's going to come as a coach, so you're telling your back, you check him. If he doesn't come, now you release. We're not going to do that. We're going to tell him once that ball is snapped, you're going. That backer can come if he wants to. If he comes, we're going to go throw, we're going to throw hot. And so the backers just, we gonna hit that, we gonna hit that back hard. So therefore you gotta take him out. Uh, and watching film, one of the worst things from a guy who likes to throw the ball that I've seen is to take backs and sit them in the backfield thinking that those linebackers are gonna rush and just have them sitting there. Get them out, build your hots into that. Hit them hot if those backers wanna come in there and we still got a good play. What we've gotten into is that because we release our backs, they won't blitz because they can't keep up with those quick backs coming outside, so they're going to take off out. If you come up and then try to get out there, it's too late. So you got to make a commitment to stay back and go get them. That way we're getting our backs. we got more people in there, plus we're taking out a rusher in there. He can't rush because we're going to get out there. One example, it's five-step drop. We're not going to throw anything over three. The deepest we'll go is five step. If we go seven, it's going to be at our 344. Our, our, not, well, our sprint, we call it three, our sprint draw protection. If we go sprint draw, we go seven. Anything else, we're going to get rid of it. And five, step, we're not, five steps, we're not going to throw it very deep. I'd rather have a deep drop. Why? Because we don't want that quarterback holding the ball a long time. If they come with the blitz, he's got some hot reads that he's going to go to. Now, what we like to do off of this, what we like to do off of this is be able to throw our outcut. If we go to three wide receivers to throw out, we like to tighten our wide receivers up some to leave, a cell, leave ourselves some room to go outside. Now, what happens now is we want to throw our outcut. We going out, and Coach Holt showed you the outcut, how they, how they ran it. We run it basically the same way of getting up and rolling it out. So we go our outcut now, and we're still bringing this back up here, and outside we're bringing him on a diagonal in here. We're going to throw the out, the tight end now. We're going to bring him down. He has an automatic broken arrow in the middle. The quarterback is going to take the ball and he's going to take the shortest throw. Preferably to the short side over here because we feel like the ball has a shorter distance to travel. Our chances of completing that one are better. If we get a blitz, this is one of the things that we like to throw against the blitz. If we get a perimeter blitz outside, we feel like we're going to get that ball off before you get there. If you bring it from over here, that ball is going to be gone. We like to throw the ball facing wherever the blitz is coming from. We're going to take the th shortest throw. If they roll the coverage up to the uh, weak side, they've got a hard cone over here, and they've got a soft over here, we go there. The quarterback on his pre-step read is going to watch the rotation of the safeties and throw to the soft side every time. Now, what happens now, if we've got our out call, and they come up with hard corners on both sides. They've got the safeties on the hash. Now what do we have? 
These people here now are going to run fades up the field. He's still here and he's going out and I've got my vertical again. Now I can come back and hit him. Why? Because that's the one I want. I want to be able to hit that tight end down the middle. I'm going to perfect it. So regardless of what they do, I think that the thing that happens is that, that once people change coverages, now you're saying, oh, I, this is not good versus this coverage. Or if they blitz, you're thinking, well, if they blitz, what happens is I got to be in this. What we've tried to do is to design patterns that I don't care what they do, I've got something to cover it. If I'm thinking I got a blitz coming and I want to throw my out, and if they come on a blitz, I've got my out. What happens if they, they, they fool me? They roll it up hard and too deep. I want this throw here anyway. So again, I've got some outs. If I want to be able to out of my four wide receiver set, if they're coming with a blitz, I've got hot reads that I can go to. Again, I am not going to sit there and say, well, I think they're going to do this. I want to throw this. I know I have an idea of what they might do. I've got a pattern that I want to call, and within that pattern, whatever they do, I've got it covered. I don't have to worry about, well, they got me on this one. Now, from throwing the out, there are six, uh, 12 yards. Uh, we go up six steps and we start our roll at 10, ended up at 12. In the next segment, segment when I talk about developing wide receivers, I go over some of the steps of those patterns. Now, from this set here, we throw our out. One of the things that happened was that they would take these people and start trying to run out here, getting up under them, and that's when we had this and this. So what we wanted to do there was try to build something else in to take advantage of people trying to run up under our outs. So now we went back to our four wide receiver set and we built off of that. I've still got my out. I've still got my out here. And I've got my out here. Now what happens is they're trying to take people and run them to get up under those outs. So now I'm going to take my two inside receivers, my two inside receivers, and I'm going to replace these guys. So as they start to run out, I'm sitting here. And I'm going to hold that backer in the middle right here. If he wants to run out, I hit him. If that wheel wants to run out to get up under here, I got him. This guy here has to hang down in the middle in here. Again, now if I want to throw my out out that set, I'm just hooking those two people up inside, 10 yards deep. If they want to run, fine. Now what's my thought process here? If I get man coverage on the outside, or if I get soft corners on the outside, I am going outside. Again, I want this throw here. I want my shorter throw. What happens now if they give me a blitz? If they give me a blitz now, I've got these people here on the inside, plus I've got hot reads coming out here, or I've got a hot read there built into the pattern. I'm only going to get a hot read from a four wide out uh, set with only one person on each side with this guy here and this man here. That way the outside people won't have to worry about I've got to change because I've got a blitz. We put the responsibility on the two inside people to run hot patterns or check for the blitz and they will check there. So now if they roll up, if they give me a two deep coverage where they've got hard corners out here, now these people versus hard corners are going to run the fade. That means I've got linebackers trying to play them, and all we're going to do is move around the linebackers and find the open area in there. What happens if they play a man under coverage where they're going to get in these guys' hip pocket, as we've seen, and try to get up under them? Now we move inside, and we bounce back out. The way that we want to bounce back out on that is that once we come into him, we come back down. Don't slide out because now he can go here. Don't drift back, he can cut up, cut up under you. So work back and it's harder for him to get back in there. Now, 
in this particular pattern, I've got built in everything that I want there. From that particular pattern, I go to what I like to call my, the smash. If you're going to put in the vertical passing game, this is almost a must that you've got to have because it complements this one so well. Again, I've got my vertical split. I've got these guys out to the top of the numbers, splitting the difference. Now, on the smash, I've got the outside receivers taking off the ball to a depth of six yards on both sides. Before, we had them fading versus a hard corner. Now they're not going to fade. Regardless of what the coverage is, they're going to go at six, and they're going to stop. If I get a perimeter blitz, then I've got this man here on a six-yard stop. If I get some blitz from out here, he's already on a six-yard stop. So I don't have to adjust anybody because that's what's in their pattern. These, that's, this guy here knows that if any blitz comes from over here, I've got to look for the ball quick. He knows the same thing on that side. I've got to look for the ball quick. We bring them off the ball slow. On this particular one, we bring them off the ball slow because we want those inside people to turn, penetrate downfield. If there's a blitz coming, now you sprint off the ball, get your head around quick and find the football. What we do with our inside people now is we take him upfield, 8 to 10, and he's breaking to the back pylon. Now what we do is set up, that's the goal line, that's the back pylon. We want him going to the back one. Why? So that quarterback can lay that ball over in there. If he cuts this thing short, what happens is you have a corner trying to stay in there and play both of them. And it makes it very difficult on him when you stop and you take the correct thing. And now the quarterback has a chance to hit him or go here. We want the shortest throw. We want the high percentage pass. We don't want to say, let's wait, he might come. We're going to take what they give us and work our way down the field. Our quarterback completed, uh, I think it was 69.5% of his passes this past year. Why? He took what they gave him. We didn't want to force anything. Let's take it and let's move down the field. Now, on this side over here, we get him coming down. Before, he was running that broken arrow all the time. Now he's coming, a little head move, and he's going back outside. His angle, again, is the back pylon. Now we got a stretch on him. They think we got the vertical coming. Now we're breaking everything to the outside as opposed to going upfield. We got two stops outside, high percentage throws that we can hit on that. Now what happens now is that you have these safeties. They're sitting on the hash. And this safety is used to this guy running that broken arrow to the inside or coming straight up the field on him. Now he's breaking outside. This safety here, he's accustomed to this man coming downfield. Now he's breaking outside. So we run this a couple of times. Uh, now we get these safeties coming off the hash, and they're trying to get outside to stop those flags. So now what we're going to do is take this tail back, and we're going to run him right down the middle of the field. So now when these guys start running out, we got that tailback coming right down the pipe. What do we tell the quarterback when we want to hit the tailback? We don't say hit the tailback, throw the ball to the tailback. We tell him check the tailback first and then follow your read. What we found over the years is that when we say hit him, five people could drop back there. Well, of course, you said hit him, and he's going to throw it. So what we're doing now, we say check him. If he's not there, let's go outside by saying check him we're telling him, don't throw it, but just look at it. Now come off of it as opposed to saying, I want you to hit that tail back. I know he's going to be open. What happens if they drop back? Now what we've tried to do is eliminate that by just putting that word in there. Again, we got whatever they do, we got it covered. If they want to play hard corners, we're going to hit the fade. If they want to play soft and blitz, we're going to come outside. If they want to run out and get there, we got that tail back down the middle. And this throw, he's going to take a little bit longer. He's going to have to hold it. But the thing is, if this linebacker here is walling and they're playing out and running out here, then that line should be able to hold him out. He should be able to buy you some extra time to be able to get that ball off there. Okay, now from this, 
we go into our what we call our choice pattern. If we're in our three wide receiver set, we're in our three wide receiver set and we want to run our choice pattern. What we're doing now is we're taking this tight end and we're driving him out here for a depth of three yards and he's at the top of the numbers. Now someone has to run out here and try to get to that tight end. So this wide receiver here is going to start a three-step stem inside looking for whoever is running outside. He does not know if it's going to be that end, that Sam, or that strong safety, but someone is going out to that flat to get on that guy. If they do not, then we're going to hit him all day. So somebody's got to go out there. Now what he's going to do is start inside looking for whoever is coming out to get this man here. Once he encounters him, if it's that strong safety, he's going to get vertical up the field for 10 and just sit in the little hole right there. We're going to take this back now and scat him to the outside. Also, we can again bring him up in there. Back to the weak side, we come here, and someone has got to come out to get him. So we just option off of him. Now what happens now, we want to come back with the same one in our four wide receiver set. Three yards, now his landmark to the short side is splitting the difference between the sidelines and the bottom of the numbers. Why? We want to get some separation in there so that he can catch the football. Here, as I said before, his landmark here is three yards and it's the top of the numbers. He's coming back inside and he is here at 10. He's coming inside and he's here at 10. Now, why, again, who's going to cover him and who's going to cover him? Somebody in the inside, they've got to go out to get them. What happens now if they want to play with the hard corners outside? Now, who's going to take these guys? And all, they've get, all we bring them in now is come into the linebacker. If the linebacker want to turn and wall them, bounce out. Stick him and bounce back down to the ball. If they're dropping back in a zone, someone again is going to be moving out here. We just find him and just hook to his inside shoulder. And we've got a little cavity in there. Again, high percentage reads come in and there. We can bring this back around here, or we can bring him and set him in there. Your choice, whichever you feel is best for you. He's going to stop no matter what. We don't want to give him an option. We're going to stop. A lot of our passing game is based on a high-low principle of getting a, a low man and stretching a corner. He has to decide which one he wants to take. Others are based on the inside, just option. Someone has got to go out to the flat to cover someone. Again, we just hook in. We replace people in that particular phase of it. How deep is that curl there? Ten yards deep. It's ten yards. Okay. The other one we like to throw is what we call the 570Q. Let me, uh, let me go to some film. I've got about 10 minutes left. And let's go to some film so I give you a chance to look at some of these. You want to go ahead and run that now? What I want to show you on these are some of the, uh, what it actually looked like in a game, starting with our vertical, uh, with the wide receivers. You look at the split of our wide receivers and them getting up field on the wide split. Look how we spread the defense out.
Okay, could you run that one back? Run it, re, run it back to the beginning, please. Okay, right here. Could you put it on the line and freeze it? Okay, freeze it right there. Now, what we've got is you notice how wide these are pro splits here with the numbers inside that four. What we always do when we go out on the field is we step off exactly how far it is from the sidelines to the top of the number. So you can see here what we've done is that we've stretched our wide receivers out real wide and look at that secondary, how that secondary is stretched out. Now you see the two out, run it, let's run it back a couple, run it down one time, we run it back. Watch the outside people on both sides. See how they're sprinting, they're getting downfield. Now let's run it back again. Now, look at the tight end down the middle, how he's running and he's got his broken arrow. He's hitting the open area in the middle. And we got him in there. Now let's run it back again. Now look now at the tailback come out. Watch the tailback come out on the linebacker. That linebacker has to stop. See, he can't get up on the side. He, he's got to chop his steps. He cannot get up under that pattern because he's got to worry about that back coming out. Okay, let it go ahead and go. Again, you see, this is what we call a broken arrow. You see the other receiver on the other side getting up the hash. It's an end zone copy of it. And again, we're going to work that in our practice. Again, outside, you got soft corners now. Again, we're coming back to the middle on the inside. Receivers are taking off outside. See how they're staying on their landmarks? And we break a man over in the middle of the field. Tight copy, you see the safety running. We're still coming up it back over into the middle. Okay, again, what they're doing, run it back and stop it. Okay, now, what they're doing now, one of the ways, run it back to the next one and stop it at the beginning, please. One of the ways that people try to stop the verticals is by doing like Miami did by playing four cross. Now, what we do on four cross, again, we're running our receivers down deep. We're running, see, playing four cross. We're again getting our receivers down deep. We're still going to bring that back out on that linebacker, and we're still going to run the broken arrow back inside. Usually what you've told your safeties is don't let anybody get behind you, whether those wide receivers or not. You're going to get back by penetrating those wide receivers downfield. Now I've got a chance to break up on the inside of it. Okay, let it go. And you see the wide receiver come back and inside. Now run back and just look, run it back. Watch his little head move coming back to the. This is something that we work on every day. Little head move. When we run our pass patterns, if they don't give us that head move, we make them go back and do it again because we know that we can get a little head move on that safety because he doesn't know we're going to run that flag pattern going up the field or coming back to the inside. Run it back one more time. Now let's look at this back coming out of the backfield. Look at the back coming out of the backfield on that line. See so the linebacker has to stop. And see, the, he's keeping the linebacker down. Now the linebacker can't drop up and get up under, so we create a cavity in there to lay the ball in. How deep is the back? The, the back want to get up three to four yards. Running back again. Now you see the back coming out of the backfield. See how they run, freeze it right there? Now, let it go and freeze it. Okay, right here. Now, what has happened now? The linebackers now are running to get back up under the broken arrow in the middle so the quarterback sees the linebacker running. What have they done to the tight end? They wall the tight end. They're walling to keep him from coming in the middle. They're dropping those other four people back and they're running the linebacker out of the middle. He's in the middle of the field trying to get in the throwing lane of the quarterback. So what he does now is he hits the back coming out of the backfield. Look at the back. Let it go. Now we've got the back out of the backfield. Again, you can see him running out. Quarterback, it's easy reads for the quarterback. Again, now we come back to the wall. You get your tail back out again, run it back again. 
Look at what happened. Look what happens to your tailback. Those people run back. Look at the tailback. Now we got the tailback coming out again. Easy read. They run back. You hit that tailback. They come up. You go right behind them. Big on big. Again now. What we got now, run it back. Everyone is playing a man on the technique for an example on this one. They're trailing all the wide receivers, pick up the back. So what the quarterback will do now is just take off and run. Why? Because everybody's gone. As you can see, we got big on big and we hound the twist uh, by just sitting back with the offensive line techniques that they give them now. What happens now is the safety man stays in the middle. Let's take a look at this one. Running back, now look at the safety man now. Safety man now is in the middle. Look at the tight end now. He's staying up the hash and he's able to hit him going there. All right? Let's go to the next graphic. We'll just let these running out. Uh, but we don't have much time. Let's go speed it up to the next graphic and I can give you a, a, another look at another pattern. Okay, now 60 takeoff again. This is at our three wide receiver set. Now, let's go back and look up at the top. Freeze it a second. Now, what we want to do is we go into a game, we want to pick out where we want the quarterback to throw the ball. If we throw takeoffs, we want to throw it with this receiver. Why? Because he's our best one at getting deep. Or we want to throw it against this defensive back because we feel like we can hit him deep. We won't go into a ball game and say, let's throw the takeoff. We're going to match up our best receiver with their weakest defensive back. If they've got two good defensive backs, then we're going to match our best receiver up with the defensive back that plays the tightest coverage. What happened here, the best defensive back that Nebraska had was up at the top. He played the tightest coverage, but again, he was the best one. So we felt like with our speed, we could go by him. Now, normally what happens when you run the takeoffs is you tell your people to stay outside. We do, uh, we try to do it too. But what happens is this guy here is taught the back outside. If you go outside, he's going to back you into the sideline. So there comes a point, let it run. When he starts it, he just break it up inside of him. Again, what we're trying to do is keep him from pinning us to the side. We get in a position and we're just to the football. Okay, now this is the Bobcat. This is the two outs on the outside and the choice on the inside. See the white running back again? You see, now you've got a hard corner down here, so you've got a fade. You've got a soft corner up top. Quarterback is going to take the soft corner. He's going to take the soft corner. He reads it by the rotation of the safeties. The choice route is on the inside. I'll show you on the next picture. The choice, look at the two inside receivers. See, they're working on those people to the inside. They're going to go down at 10. If they're inside, they just bounce out. If they run out in a zone, see they're playing a, a man coverage there on the inside. They're manning up all of our receivers. We just drive them off downfield and bounce to the outside. If they run out in a zone, we hit the open area. Okay, now we go to the bench. What we call is the bench, which is an outcut head towards the bench. Now you see him on the six-step row, and he's coming outside. We want to take the shortest throw. You look up at the top, you got the six-step row. Now again, you got the tight end coming down the middle, running a broken arrow. If they go hard corners on both sides, I got my tight end down the middle again. Okay, now what you have here, run it back. Now, run it and uh, freeze it right there. Now, what you have here, we're running the bench. We've got man coverage on the outside, and they're bringing the strong safety to the wide side. The inside receiver now is going to run a, a stop because we can't block that guy. The quarterback has a choice. He can throw it to the outside or he can hit the stop. We do not feel if we throw the ball on rhythm that they're going to be able to stop that outside cut. We don't feel like he can do it. The only way that they can stop it is that we don't throw it on rhythm. Now, on rhythm. now we got a sack. So now let's go back and watch him. 
He got the blitz coming, but see, now he's getting rid of the ball. We get the out cut over there, and it's not going to affect us. You see him coming in here? Now we get the out cut here, going to the outside, picking the softest coverage in here. Just rolling the ball, just rolling outside, taking six steps and roll. Six steps and roll. What's the quarterback release time? Quarterback is going to, the heels at five, take three chop quick steps for timing and release the football. Again, we're going to find one of those sides that's going to be soft, and we're going to pick it to that side and let the ball go. The smash route, now, we run this, freeze it right here. Now look at the splits. You see how we've got everybody out wide? We're trying to move everybody out, spread the defense. Look how the defenses, the cornerbacks, are spread it out all over the field. Now we bring the outside people, as we said before, on six-yard stops. We're running the inside people on flag. Remember on verticals, they were getting straight up the field. Now they're going up and they're breaking to the outside. Cornerback here, run it back. You see the cornerback to the wide side. He want to drop back here and try to take away that, leaving us that. We're going to take what you give us. If you want to give us that, fine. We're going to take it. We are not going to force the ball upfield. We will take what you give us. You must be patient if you're going to throw it. Uh, running back is going to go up the middle. And okay, now what we have now, running back again. Okay, freeze it. Now look at the secondary and watch the rotation of the secondary. You can see where the quarterback let it go. Now see the, the head move got the safety on that side to come up. So now we throw opposite the safety man who's coming up. Now run it back. Look at the safety man up top. You got, one, you got one safety here that's playing tight. You got one that's back. Which one are you going to throw at? You're going to throw at the one that's deep. So now we just pick on him. Why? Because he's deeper and we want to come inside of him. Run it back again. Now look at the tailback. See a picture of the tailback on it. Look at the tailback going down the middle. Now we get the tail back down the middle. And what we do is come back and just tell him to check him. Okay, what we had here, we'll, we'll just freeze it. Now, uh, we we're playing Florida and they had a blitz on. And if he got up there and they came, we did not want to get that tail back. We could pick up everybody on the line. What we were concerned about, yes, we can pick them up, but we couldn't stop them big suckers. So what we said, well, let's just, we're not going to change any outside people. Let's just change it up and let's hit that tailback quick. Why? It's not a hot read. It's not a side adjustment. It's just being realistic and saying, my offensive lineman can't stop their defensive line, so I've got to adjust. And the way I adjust now is with my tailback just coming out. Go ahead. Okay, again, now, safety man run back. Safety man is running out there. Watch the safety man. See where he's running? Quarterback knows if he's leaving there, I'm going the other side. So I come back on the other side and I hit my stop there. Again, watch the closer. Watch the safety man take off out of there. He takes off. Now the quarterback knows he's coming back to the weak side over here. Okay, now let's run it back again. Now, freeze it right there. 
Okay, now, I've got the strong safety here on my Y. I've got the corner here. I've got the free safety back here. I've got a nickel man on the other side. See where the nickel man is running? He's running to the wide side of the field. Why? They think we're getting ready to run that vertical. Are we going to run that flag back to that side? So they're running over now. They're trying to stop it. What do they leave on the other side? They've got one-on-one -on -one to the back side. Quarterback checks that safety man running. Now he knows I'm coming back side. Again, a little head move, little head move every time. Watch 24. So he's running, quarterback knows now I'm coming back the other way. Okay, now run it back. What do you have now? Look up at the top up there. You got a blitz coming by the perimeter outside. If the blitz is coming now, the quarterback knows now I, my hot read is my X on the outside. They've got man coverage and man coverage. They're not going to play me tight. They're going to get back. If they want to go bump and run, we have not seen bump and run because our people can run. But if we had bump and run, then we would run the fade on them. But right here, but in this pattern, we're going to stop, drive them off, and we get the six-yard stop. Quarterback knows anytime he has that blitz outside that he's coming outside. Now we come with the 60 charge to the end. A three wide receiver set. Outside man is coming out inside. Uh, rather, outside man is going inside on the choice. The wide now is coming three uh, yards out in the flat. Go ahead and run it. Goes back up at the top. You got tailback going out in the flat. Run it back. See how we bring that back up in the middle? The titles linebackers up in the middle so they can't run out of there and try to get up under one of those patterns. We bring in the back out to the wide. We call it a scat. We bring in the back out on the scat. Run it back. You see we bring in the back. You bring in, we bring in the full back out on the scat to that side to make number 49 run out of the middle so we can hit that wide receiver. We're bringing the back up in here, hook him down to keep him from running out and getting up under this one over here. Again, run it back again. You can see him working off the inside. He's coming here. We got it with a tight end going out. See this guy running with the tight end? Open up a big hole in there. He just goes up and replaces him at 10 yards, working back to the football. Now, come back again. Put it on the line and freeze it. Now, what we said before is that we adjust with our inside. Now, that tight end, remember I told you before, that tight end has a three-yard flat pattern. The tight end is still running his three yards at the top of the numbers, and he's going to stop. Now, if he gets a perimeter blitz from his side, he is still running the same pattern. The only thing now, he's going to get his head around quick and look for the ball because he knows that the quarterback's going to hit him quick because he's got a blitz coming. Why? We've got it already built in. That we're not going to change it and say, now he's going to blitz you, do this. No, you do the same thing. Just get your head around quick because the quarterback's going to get you the ball. Watch the tight end up at the top. And we're able to hit him without adjusting the pattern. We've got it built in. The choice, the choice now is out of this particular choice is five is that our four wide receiver set. We get the Y coming out to the top of the numbers three yards deep. 
we get the inside receiver up at the top up there, three yards deep, splitting the, splitting the difference between the bottom of the number and the uh, sideline. Now we get the outside receivers reading, see who's running outside to cover those people and just opting the inside off of them. See, we're putting out back down. You can hook that back up to tie the back. You can sit him down the middle. We've done it both ways. Again, now run it back. Now what has happened, look up at the top. What they're doing now is they're turning the man, the inside receiver loose up at the top. Okay, freeze it. Now, you see how the inside, the, uh, the, the backer to the inside who should have been on him, he's running back into a zone, trying to get up on the, the wide receiver. Quarterback just read it to that side. He went outside to the back. Again, don't force it. Throw it to whoever is open. Again, the guy in the flat. Take what they give you. Again, what do we get? We get 9 or 10 yards on it. Just taking a short throw. Again, you look at the splits now. See how we've tightened the split up a little bit now. We've changed it. Run it back again. What we got now, the linebacker now is going to move outside to get the guy in the flat. He moves to get the guy in the flat. That means it opens up a hole in there for that wide receiver outside. Now, that's how he slides out to get. Now, all he did, he didn't go all the way on him. All he did was just slide outside to get in a position to cover. When he slid outside, we just hooked right there in the open area. Again, they're going to sit back in the zone. We're still in the open area sitting down. Okay, now run it back. Now, look at the backer here. Watch the inside backer here. He's second receiver here. He's coming out. He's going to run out to get him. He's coming inside looking for him because he's going to come out. Once he runs out to get him, he just hooked in the area that he left. Just hook right in that area to let him run out and just stop there. Okay, run it back again. What happened now? Look at the back. They're backing up, taking the inside, leaving this guy here coming out by himself. Now we take him, freeze it. What did he do? He went back to get up under the inside receiver. He stayed back deep. Vertical's coming. What we do, we take the shortest throw out here. Quarterback, just read that guy. Where he's going, just throw opposite him. Again, now run it back. They're jumping on the inside receiver, coming inside. Get the outside guy. What side, what, what side does he know? How, to, what, how does he know what side to go to? Right there, they're pretty much straight across. They're straight across now. Based on scouting reports, we find certain people we want to pick on doing the scouting report, and we'll tell them to go to that particular side. What we, tr uh, what we look for is people that can't move. Linebackers that don't move as well from the inside, and we try to throw at those people who, you know, you got a fluid athlete and one's a stiff, we're going to go to the stiff athlete. Okay, this was the cue pattern that I didn't get to. Now we're bringing these guys to the side. They're coming out to the side uh, uh, five yards deep as opposed to three yards, and now we got the inside people running what we call a cue, which is a, what we call a corner pattern. And you see we still got the tail back down the middle. They're dropping back now trying to get the inside receiver and we throw it outside. Mm -hmm. 
receivers got to keep working back to the football. Okay, go ahead and cut it there. Okay, let me answer any questions that you may have at this time. Yes, sir. Okay. What we want to do on the queue now is we want to tighten the outside receivers up just a little bit. About two steps, giving themselves some room going outside. Now, these people went in the flat before at three yards deep because we were running a 10 yard pattern on the inside. Now we're taking him down a little bit deeper. His landmark is the same, but only now he's going down at five yards. For an example, if we had a hard cone over this side with the safety man on the hash, he would stem inside, getting away from him. Get up the field to a depth of 10, two steps, breaking back out somewhere between 24 to uh, 22, 24 yards deep. Again, what are the key points? Stem inside, three steps. Back vertical up the field, not at an angle up the field, but get vertical to make that guy think that you're going deep. The two steps in here is to make this safety man back up. If you roll that, he's gonna come down. If you stick him, he doesn't know if you're coming at him or not. What you wanna do is stick him here, and now you break him, be ready to come back down to the football, but you take this angle, leaving the quarterback some room, and let him lay it back over in there. Again, we're gonna take him and put him down the middle. What happens now, say you get uh, just a corner on this side, backing up, playing outside leverage. You got the strong safety in here, and that strong safety is coming down on him, and that back is trying to wall him with that safety coming over. Now you're going to run it different with the soft corner. With the soft corner, we're going outside shoulder for five steps. We're going inside shoulder for five steps, looking back at the ball. Now, what is outside shoulder? What is inside shoulder? For an example, this is outside shoulder. This is inside shoulder. I want you to run here and here. I do not want you to run there or here. I said here. I want you here. Or I want you here. Why? Because I want a subtle change of directions. I do not want to get too far inside of him because I don't want to cross his face when I come back out. Now as I go up, I look back for the ball. Now I work back down. I work back down to the ball, keep coming back down outside. So the quarterback, if I take this angle, he's got a chance to make a play. But by making almost like a deep comeback, I got a chance to keep him on my hip, and I work back down to the ball. Again, outside shoulder, inside shoulder, looking back at the quarterback. What we tell him here on that five steps to the post, be an actor, sell the post. Make him think you're going to the post. Now what happens a lot of times you tell them to run five steps and five steps, they run five and five. They're doing what you tell them to do. What we try to tell them is put yourself into it. You got to sell it. You got to make it work and then break it back out. Don't just run it because I tell you to run it. Sell the pattern. Make him think you're going to the post and then breaking it back out. That's the 570 Q there. If we run it with uh, a three wide out set, then we'll do the same thing here. The only thing now, he's back in here, and he's coming on out in the flat from there, and everything else will be the same. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, flat routes, here's five. Okay. We'll take a five-minute break, and we'll come back, and uh, we'll kind of re uh, – Coach Host talked about wide receiver play a little bit earlier, and we're going to – See, we can repeat some of the same things and make him feel good. Okay, five minutes.